everyone, so I am coming on here to shoot a video today in part to promote my new intensive coaching program that I am offering starting in July. I am launching my first cohort. It is called Brain Resilience. Uh, it is a comprehensive six-month program uh, with a small group cohort, so you get the best of both worlds of being in a supportive community with like-minded people um, while also getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one individualized support for your specific situation, which may be very complex. Uh, and so you need that one-on-one -on -one, uh, time as well. So it's built into to get those best of both worlds. Um, I am taking applications right now. I have uh, some people signed up already, but there are still a few spots left in the July cohort. And I have uh, a lot of application reviews uh, scheduled for the next couple weeks. So if you are interested in this program, please apply now so we can get you uh, all uh, set up and, and ready to go for it. But uh, this leads me to talk about mental illness, trauma, anxiety, and how our current society, <laughs> the current time we're in and the societies that we're living in uh, are really creating a population full of mentally ill, traumatized, and anxious people. And the program I've developed has been um, really specifically designed to target the key factors that I think are contributing to this epidemic um, so that you can build Brain Resilience, <laughs> the name of the program, of course. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about this issue and, and my take on it. Um, so this, this is a hard topic because um, there's a lot of nuance to it. So I'm happy to start a discussion in the comments and address any um, additional like concerns or follow-ups that people are interested in. Um, and may give a few little hot takes <laughs> in this video, which you may or may not agree with. Um, but I am always learning. I'm always opening open to changing my opinion and uh, adjusting my perspectives. Um, I certainly... Feel like I change my mind and adjust my perspective on things like weekly <laughs> as I learn more so I'm very open to that um, but uh, but I'm gonna do my best to get into the nuance of these issues um, one thing I think that a lot of people have forgotten is that we are wild animals I mean we have really domesticated ourselves right <laughs> but ultimately like we are animals uh, and when you are an animal trying to survive, um, you know, nature is not always friendly. Like nature is not always, you know, like sunlight and rainbows. You know, nature is also drought and predation and poisonous animals, you know. Um, and in order to survive and to thrive and to self-actualize and really reach your full potential, there is a certain amount of fortitude, of um, mental toughness that I think is required. Um, and you have to go through hardship to gain this, right? Um, if you are never exposed to any kind of natural stress, you're not going to thrive, actually, right? Because we are built to succeed in the world with a certain amount of this toughness. Um, and we have to go through hardship to get that, just like you harden a plant. I don't know if any gardeners are watching this. My mom is a big gardener, so I know all about this. She's always talking to me about hardening off her <laughs> her baby plants. But, like, she exposes her the baby plants, like, to the cold and, and to, you know, uh, the weather, you know, before she plants them in the ground because she's building toughness. She's building up their ability to be resilient and survive in the real world, which is – sometimes kind of brutal. Um, so I think these are really necessary skills to develop that um, some people seem to be rejecting. I, I see a lot of content like, um, you know, I just want to be soft. I'm tired of being resilient. You know, I just need gentleness. And um, I don't think that that's a wrong thing. I, I think that there's a balance here. But I also think that we do need to really appreciate um the building of resilience, that this is actually just a thing that all animals do, and we are an animal, and it is our birthright to gain a certain amount of resilience through hardship to become our best selves. Now, this should be balanced with a context of support, nurturance, right? And I think the difference that um, 
happens between our cultures and maybe more traditional cultures is that um, we experience a lot of trauma and hardship in our society, right? I'm not saying that people in our society aren't experiencing enough hardship because people are, but it's the wrong kind in the wrong context. So um, we really see that pretty brutal uh, initiations are universal across cultures, right? So much so that in some traditional cultures, like children actually die sometimes as a part of their initiation process. And I'm not saying that that's a good thing. I mean, that is very intense and very extreme. And usually it's cultures that are existing in some of the most brutal natural environments uh, that have more brutal initiation processes. But across the board, all cultures have initiation ceremonies where young people are made to go through very intense experience uh, in order to become a full member of the tribe or community. And so, you know, objectively, these are traumatic experiences, right? But they don't cause PTSD in these kids, right? Because it is happening in the context of what they know is a unconditionally loving, supportive community of centuries of traditions uh, and cultural context that is coherent, that makes sense, right? And so what we're seeing today is that um, we don't have, (laughs) for the most part, I mean, obviously there's lots of exceptions and I love it when I see exceptions, but for the most part, you know, in Western society today, American society, you know, uh, any, however you want to, you know, define it, um, we don't have that happening, right? People are incredibly traumatized uh, through life hardships without a cushion around the experience of community support, of unconditional love, of secure attachment, um, of spiritual health, of, you know, uh, the structure of, you know, centuries or millennia of tradition, um, or the physical and mental preparation Right? We are not physically or mentally preparing people to be resilient. Um, and I'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, so what this means is we have this perfect storm, right? We have to understand all of this in context. And the way we've set up our society is that we have a very mentally and physically weak and a highly traumatized population. So people are having plenty of hardship, but it's the wrong kind without the proper support and the proper preparation of physical and mental strength that is being cultivated. So these kinds of traumas that people are coming to therapy with, right? These are like attachment traumas. These are betrayal traumas, right? These are institutional traumas, right? Where someone's own parents or family or community or institutions that are supposedly supposed to protect us have turned against people, right? And have um, really betrayed them um, or really harmed or really hurt them, you know, emotionally, mentally, physically, you know, all of the above. Um, And that just does not happen in the same way in traditional settings, right? Like when you are living in a smaller, tight-knit community that has been around for generations and generations, you know, like they have very strict practices in terms of how children are raised and how communities support people um, and what the, the spiritual beliefs and practices are that are very supportive and just lead to a deep sense of security in the world and in the community. Um, so we've the kind of trauma that people in the Western modern world are experiencing today is not like your normal kind of trauma that we evolved to experience, right? It's not like I had to go hungry for two days because, you know, we couldn't find food because there was a drought, you know. I was out on a hunting trip and I got attacked by a lion, you know, and I had to fight it off, you know. Um, You know, there was, there is a neighboring tribe that we are in, um, you know, conflict with, you know, and I have to be careful because they could attack at any moment, right? (laughs) Like these are these, I mean, very intense traumatic situations, right? Or like the initiations, right? Where people have to do really brutal things and and overcome really, you know, um, intensive uh, tasks. Um, But now it's like, you know, um, I was never taught how to manage my own 
emotions. No, sorry, I hope this is still working. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, I had big emotions and I was sent to my room <laughs> instead of supported, right? Uh, or I was humiliated in front of my entire school class when, you know, I, I didn't know the answer and I was, you know, punished for it. Um, you know, or, you know, I was beaten, you know, by my father, you know, like these are not the kind of child rearing practices that have been in traditional societies. Um, you know, we see a huge difference between parenting styles in traditional cultures and in more modernized cultures. Uh, in traditional cultures, um, children sometimes do just die of accidental deaths or injuries because they are given an immense amount of freedom to like trial and error figure out the world right so kids are allowed to play with knives and to run around by themselves in the jungle you know and climb on you know big rocks uh, and play near the fire i mean kids are kind of given free reign in a lot of ways in a lot of these traditional tribal cultures um uh, but the rules they do have are very, very strict. They're like cultural taboos, right? And so they may be allowed to play with a knife and cut themselves, but if they do hurt themselves, they are showered with comfort, right? So when you are injured or when you go through something, you know, you have uh, a huge amount of emotional um, attachment support from not only your immediate family, but your whole community, right? Whereas in modern society, you see this opposite thing, right? Where people are being micromanaged, children, I should say, are being micromanaged, right? I don't know if you, maybe you've observed this, but like, you know, I'll go to a park or something and I will just constantly be hearing parents shout at kids like, be careful, don't do that, don't climb on that, don't do this, you're going to get hurt, right? Just like constantly micromanaged, like not actually allowed to take risks or experience the world. And I just think like, wow. Like, what a way to condition anxiety disorders in kids, right? Is to constantly make them feel afraid of their world, you know? But then, you know, maybe they get teased on the playground and they have a big emotional response and it's, oh, you're fine, stop crying, you know, as opposed to being given comfort, you know? And so it's, it's, um, it's being, um, conditioned or, or hyper fixated on the wrong things, right? So it's like this very opposite experience. And this really primes kids to grow up, you know, traumatized, anxious, mentally ill. Uh, so a huge part of building brain resilience is to do reparenting work and to release the stuck tension that has been making you feel like the world is inherently unsafe or that something is inherently wrong with you or there is something inherently wrong with having emotions, right? These are the messages that we tend to accumulate from the epidemic of attachment trauma and really problematic parenting styles that a lot of people are being raised with. And this is no particular parent's fault, right? I mean, this is just like what we've done, you know, since the Victorian era, you know, so it's just like been passed down generationally. Um, but uh, a lot of this kind of trauma does require a certain amount of like inner child healing and reparenting work that is done through um, somatic techniques, you know, where we work with the body and the nervous system and we use visualization and guided meditations to really uh, unwind, you know, those traumas um, so that you can rebuild and recondition um, with a new perspective on the world and on yourself and your inherent self-worth and the safety of your community and your world. Um, this is all work that really needs to be done to build brain resilience. But at the same time, I also mentioned that a lot of people are not physiologically resilient enough as well to manage the level of stress that they're encountering. And, you know, stress is a normal part of life, you know? I mean, I think a lot of people are so chronically stressed today. We do want to work on reducing that and implementing a more um, sustainable lifestyle in terms of our stress levels and the types of stress we we're experiencing. But we have seen, there's a lot of studies I cite in my book where if someone has nutrient deficiencies or if someone has a high toxic load, right, like if someone has lead toxicity, for example, they're actually going to be more likely to develop PTSD after they go through a trauma or they're going to be more likely to be affected by the stress of some kind of event that they experience as opposed to just kind of like shrugging it off. So if we can fully support 
nutrient levels and we can actually make the brain and nervous tissue, you know, physically robust and gently detoxify these tissues, you are actually going to be um, more confident and more resilient in the world. Um, and uh, this is a huge thing for people who develop more complex psychiatric issues, chronic fatigue, dysautonomia, um, a lot of these kinds of neurological symptoms. It's this combination, right, of your nervous system um, being way overtaxed of not having enough physical or mental resilience because of the attachment trauma you've experienced in our society and also because of physiological weakness through high toxic load and through chronic nutrient deficiencies and metabolic damage. So what do you do with all this? <laughs> That's why I've designed my program, Brain Resilience. You know, I am a licensed professional counselor still. I still have my license in Oregon. Uh, and I have a, you know, career in the mental health field. I've been a trauma specialist, nervous system specialist. And now I've added the nutrition and, you know, rebalancing the gut microbiome and working more physiologically with the hormones and our liver and detox systems and really put this all together to help you build brain resilience from a truly mind-body spirit perspective, right? So I'm not just taking one angle at this. When people really have significant issues they've been struggling with for a long time, I do find that we really need to hit it from every angle. Um, and I think understanding like how our society like literally conditions people to be susceptible to these things, like it's not your fault. We were all raised in this society. And so we're all like again, highly traumatized and, you know, mentally and physically weak. And that's a really detrimental combination that leads to psychiatric illness, to chronic fatigue, to things like dysautonomia and other neurological issues. Um, and so if you really want to go on a intensive journey with me and you really want to see dramatic shifts happen over a six month period where you're working with me um, in a small group weekly, um, please apply for the program now. I do expect it to probably fill up uh, in the next couple weeks. Um, and so I really want to get your application in. And um, if I get enough interest, I will, you know, open a second cohort, you know, at some point, uh, but I can't promise when. So, you know, let's, let's get this going and let's really, again, approach this like fully holistically and get you brain resilient. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching guys.